Yo, this is it on the play. Xeno Gears. Oh, wow. Another episode with much story. So, face personalities have now merged together after F Id saw the truth what happened many years ago. Basically, um, we know that Mother M Karen was Mayang. She released the power of Faye to protect uh, Faye from Graf, who seeks his power. And then apparently it thought that releasing the power, it struck uh, Karen and killed her. That's what uh, it has always believed. The truth is, though, is that that is only half the truth. Because yes, it did strike, me on, uh, strike Karen and killed her, but it was only after it was about to kill Faye. But... Um, Miyang, just in a moment time, leaped in the behind, uh, front of Fei, saving him from him being killed by his own power, and therefore Fei survives, but Karen dies. And when he sees this, he realizes that yes, it is not as black and white and dark and evil and sadness everything as he thought it is. It actually is a bit more uh, good-hearted. Now anyways, let us get to see how this story progresses because it's actually about to get another big plot twist regarding what Faye knows and what he doesn't know because you might think Faye doesn't really know much well he knows more than anyone even Satan what do I mean by that? let us see and let us see why this game is called Cinegears Then, because when the personalities have now merged within Faye, and then you see the gear as well transform, and that gear is in the gears. Dad! Dad, are you okay? Dad, I'm sorry. This is all my fault. Faye. You return to your own self. You become one. Yes, thanks to you all. She hadn't called out to me. Ugh! Dad! Don't worry. This is good. This is after all. I. Dad? You and. You and I must become one. Ugh! Graf! What's going on? Ha ha ha! I reached the limit of this body I possessed on that day, three years ago. I required a body that would tide me over until your true awakening. That is why I acquired the body of your father. Regardless of your awakening, your merging and the inherited memories you have acquired, there was no way for you to know of this since you had lost your memory at that point. At the point in which I merged with your father. Impossible. What about wise man? What about father? Of course they were just parts of me. I couldn't hold on to Khan totally. His ego was far stronger than I imagined. When my control weakened, he showed himself to you as wise man. Ah! You have awakened. This body is now useless to me. Now I must return to my original body. The reincarnation of my body that you inhabit. Stop it, Dad! I hear you, Faye. You see, he and I are one. I am Khan. Khan is me. He has become one with me. So you two should open your heart and unite with me. Then we can go on and eliminate everything. No, I can't allow you to control me! your master, and so be it. I'll merge with both of you and your machine then. Now come, Faye. Fight me! It's no use. I know you're Lacan, and you're a part of me. That doesn't change you being my father. I could never really fight you. You're so naive. 
Well, don't you understand that your naivety is what killed Sophia? What killed your mother, Karen? I already know that. That's why I swore to never run away again. That I must rescue Ellie. So don't get you in my way. Wake up. Open your eyes, father. Lacan. If that's the case, then fight me. Fight me! I can't. I see. Then there's no choice. Huh? Since you're so unwilling to fight, I believe I have to use them as bait. Huh? Stop it! Don't we have the same memories? Can't you always remember that sadness you felt way back then? Why then? Why must we destroy everything? If we stop Deuce, won't this be all over? You still don't understand. Enough to your contact with the existence. I came to understand after my contact with the existence that even if Deuce was destroyed, as long as humans still inhabit this land, Myung, Elium, we're born time and again. No living things may as well perish along with Deuce itself. That's the only path to freedom. The path to release us from eternal cycles of life, the tragedies of history and the spell of fate. What it means is that he knows that Ellie is being reincarnated all the time and same with Miyang, and he wants to stop that. And he the only believes the only way he believes he can stop this is to destroy all. Once I woke in Darius as a weapon, I'll abridge all evil things. I used your awakened self and that machine to return everything to nothing. That's what I concluded. Miyang and Elliam are not just do small pieces. That woman is his main body. Why can't you see that? That's not true. She gave her life for me by shielding me from harm. Her eyes weren't Miyang's. Mother came back at the last moment. Miyang. Mother, even Ellie, we're all humans born on this planet. Deus doesn't matter. You'll see. I'll bring Ellie back. Father, no, Graf, Lacan. If you won't back down, never. Then I had no choice. The time has come to truly become one. Now we get to see Faye's new gear in power. And yeah, remember when you got beaten badly at the Mahanan? Well, this guy still does damage, but now our new gear is even more powerful. I mean, just kick on the booster because it's fun. This is the most awesome fight you can't really lose. Yeah, he does damage to you, but don't worry about it. How you are about to do right now is even better. Take this out. Not gonna do much, but check this out. Okay, well, told you attack again. It's fine, don't worry. Check the hyper mode on the right, though. 99%, which means after level attack level 3, a 99% chance to reach hyper mode. So we do like this now, and then I have to cancel. Check this. Yeah, this wings from behind Faye comes up. And then... Yeah. Watch this beauty. Damn! 6,800. Okay, there's no more system eat anymore because of uh, the new Xena gears. But this is the most powerful gear in the game by far. Damn. And that's how he beat him. He's. Why don't you finish me off? If you don't get rid of me, then you can get what you want. It's alright, Dad. I understand. You're not Graf. You're my father. You and Graf are one. You, uh, your will and purpose never change. Neither ones we fought. Let's stop now. Our objective should be the same. It's the same as our becoming one. We don't have to fight. Yeah! What? My 
body! Sohar is after you. The last piece to combine with Du's system. He seeks to unify with you, the first to have been divided from it. What? This is what the Khan wanted all along. After all, I am an imperfect existence. It was inevitable that it would come to this, considering what would happen in the past. The Khan's imperfect secondary contact with the wave existence split his personality into two. Eventually his body died, but the original Khan transmigrated. Bringing the destiny of becoming a contact with him, he was reborn as your present body. The remaining personages and his desires lead on separately by possessing the bodies of others. That is Graf. That is me. I may have inherited Lacan's will, but I am not the same as the contact Lacan. It is impossible for him to make the real contact. There will be no true melding and release. Even though our bodies may be different, I am still half of you. That half fact remains. Although I am imperfect, I can merge template with Sowar and thus may be able to buy you some time. This is the only way I can be of one with you. This is all I can do. The new system will start to look for you again. Before then, you have to destroy the newly perfected Deuce and his Sowar modifier. You are the only one that can destroy the physical barrier that encases God's body. Dad! As you said, that was Karen. From my generation's youngest beginning to break free from her bounds. While Nelheim has merged with Deuce, she has all her memories back. All the memories from her original birth as the contact complement up to her current transmigration. That includes all of the lives she has lived as Mian and her substitutes over the centuries. And of course, that includes your mother's memories too. Mother's memories? Faye. Cut away all the binds of mankind. You shall be able to do that now. Save her and that other woman bound within her. I am begging you, Fay. And there, Graf Lacan, Khan, wise man, goes away. Finds the pendant. It's nothing. I'm just talking to myself. I'm sorry for all the trouble I've caused everyone. Thank you all so much. Anyway, let's get going. There's little time left now for me and for our planet. But first, time to tell you guys about Faye and his existence. Onto this whole game. What is this place? This is where it all started. This is our genesis. We, no, humans were born here. Long ago, Deuce crash landed on this planet in an interplanetary colonial ship. In order to revive itself someday, Deuce detached the solar called Modifier's core. After this core unit came down here, a single woman awoke and arose from out from out it. Yeah, I remember the, the purple lady that we saw in the beginning of the movie, or the end of the beginning movie? Yeah, that's what she's referring to. She's the mother of all humanity. After she awoke, she used all her power to bear several beings. These would become the ancestors of the whole humanity. These were the Emperor and the Gazelle Ministry. Finally, she, she gave birth to replicas of herself to be humanity's caretakers. Two selves, the human mother and the weapon, the subject and the complement. That is Ellie and Mia. I, the sole survivor of the colony ship, met Ellie and everything started from there. The land of Genesis, Kadomini. This is that place. Yeah, but Faye, even with your shared fate with Deuce, why do you have such ancient memories? Usually, human memories cannot be passed on to generations. Humans do not normally have the ability to compress and store memories in their introns. But Ellie and I, and Myung, are different. Due to our connection with the wave existence, 
that is, due to Zor's ability to change possible phenomena, we can clearly store data in an entrance. In other words, we can leave behind memories to be inherited by our descendants. Just as the wave exists is bound inside of Zohar, the information is affixed to me, so to speak, by some of the power of the wave existence. Then this is... This is the form from Ellie and Myung were still one being. This is the first woman of our world. Our mother. You remember that, you remember that purple hair girl thing? Yeah, she went to that pod there to create all these beings, and then she cased herself that. So that purple headed woman is now inside there. So now we learn true. So basically, Faye was actually on the space colony ship in the beginning of the game. That was his first um, incarnation. It's kind of crazy to think about it. So, if we destroy that Soar thing, everything will be over, right? Yes. The source of our either powers and the source of power from the generators that makes our gears work. It all comes from the Soar modifier engine, which can control the potential phenomena. If we destroy it, Deuce and the Seraph Angels will all be deactivated. And then we shall also be able to free Ellie, who has become bound to the Deuce weapon system as Miyang. Right, Faye? Yeah, that's what the wave existence said. But then there's the downside. It also means that we'll no longer be able to use our gears or ether powers anymore. What are those rough angels all about anyway? That old appearance that they lack something as they were neither living beings nor weapons. So our sense is the human consciousness that incarnates the seraphs. Human consciousness? So itself involves the principle of uncertainty. The observer's perception of Soar determines the entity it actually becomes. In other words, I believe that those angels are incarnations of the spirits of people. The people who have been absorbed by Deus to become parts of it. This so will is there for them to gain and eliminate all civilization. Is this some kind of hatred for those humans who have survived? Of course not. Those people who were created and assimilated as parts for Deus would not have such intentions. Try to remember what Ellie, when she said, came young, said. The creation of God will someday become a hindrance. That is why they must be eliminated. Yes, that is why Merkava is being used to begin destru destruction. But Deuce is not following his programming of exterminating all civilization. The Seraphs, which are all terminal interface weapons of Deuce, are using their bodies composed of nanomachines to absorb massive numbers of people, regardless of whether they are dead or alive. It is not discriminating to between the mutant and non-mutant people. This is highly peculiar. peculiar. The fact that the people who are meant to be destroyed are being taken in as well. That is the absolute opposite of what it's supposed to be doing. Maybe there aren't enough parts? That is unlikely. Some of those bodies that were destined to be parts for it, due to as already acquired the abilities to the nanomachines, can just use about any material. Construct this body. It is obvious it has other intentions in mind. Those intentions, Krillin has called Deuce the Mother. If God is the Mother, then those motives are coming from the Great Mother, impeding the growth of its child, enveloping it to bring the child back to the womb to become one with it. That is his motive. Such a program does not exist within this design, though. It's probably given it this unique will by someone. Either from Ellie or as merged with the Deuce, or... Either way, it doesn't change the fact that we have to fight. Regardless of what their intentions are, the problem is how we're supposed to deal with them. You think we can just do it in our current state? This secret battleship Excalibur will also take part in the final battle. Additionally, the military potential of all the surface forces will assemble here. Even if you can put together a massive force, we still have a problem with the main arraignment of the Merkava. We need to know how to take, take it out. As long as we don't do that... Merkava's ultra long range cannon has the ability to vaporize any substance. On top of that, they have a barrier around the perimeter that nullifies all attacks. We fought against the Merkava many times to try to stop its onslaught. 
However, we cannot dig it close. Hence, we have to withdraw every time. Damn it! No matter how much we want to save Ellie, if we can't get inside the Merkava, it's meaningless. To add to that, there's the problem of those Seraphs. They function as terminal intimate weapons with closed defense. I can easily say that their attack power is equal to the Omnigear class. They even have the regenerate ability to the nanomachines. Don't be concerned about that. I was able to obtain some data from Sinogears. You see, Sinogears has mutinically evolved due to its contact with Sohar. Using that data, all of your new gears ought to be completed soon. Additionally, all the other weapons and armaments are being modified to implement the disassembled device. Disassembled device? In contrast to nanomet assemblers, which create matters to repair with, the disassemblers have the ability to dismantle and destroy matter. They can even deactivate nanomachines, restoring ability by dislocating the repair programs. They should be sufficiently effective against those two seraphs. Alright, even if we can deal with the angels, just how are we gonna get deal with that Markava? Can't get close to the thing. So Tora then basically said that he's been able to recreate the Omni Gears that we lost. Thanks to the Sino Gears that now Faye controls. Which is pretty cool though. Which means he has Fenrir and Andvari and all those gears are now back to us. Which is nice. There's no such thing as a private defense. There is a way. Look over here. Kawa's main gun requires a 1.2 second interval to reload because of a tremendous output. Upon firing, although, if it's only a sectional, there will be a portion of the barrier that will be opened. There's a 1.87 second delay before the barrier reforms in that area. If we can use this window of time to target and destroy the cannon, it will be possible to close in on it. If we get close enough, we can break through with the gravitational spatial correction. Well, this is the rough idea. Unfortunately, we don't have such a long-range cannon that could acquire time in such a brief time frame. So what he's saying is we just need to shut that annoying cannon up, right? You want to go ahead in the Merkava? Now you're being reckless again. That's suicide! No, listen. Look what they're just rushing. Data Seal 4 and this Excalibur are also quit with the barriers. That's all we use. Although only for a short time, we can withstand the right hit from Merkawa's main cannon. Then we can close in and watch, watch for a part of the barrier to go down and then destroy the cannon. How long will the barrier last? About 20 or so seconds. That's all? It doesn't matter how fast we fly. That amount of time we'll be without a barrier before we can get within firing range. And those numbers are valid only if the generator is at full drive, right? You can only get those numbers only if you sacrifice all other output and propulsion. I'm not suggesting we go in with the gun blazing, you know we're gonna lose. We're going to physically put a lid on it directly. Huh? As you said, Daedrus IV and Excalibur barrier can sufficiently defend against Merkava's attack. At least with one generator, that is. Meaning, meaning we can defend against the Merkava with twice the amount of time. 40 seconds, if we couple the two generators together. This way we can make it into the heart of Merkava. Then what about the propulsion? Just hear me out. This is what we'll do. First, we transform my Indrasil into heavy assault mode and load it onto Excalibur. We can couple the generators. By doing that, we can reduce the energy usage without just supporting the hull of the ship and generating the barrier. This will allow most of the energy to be devoted into generating the barrier. Next, shift the barrier to full front focus of it at a single point where the main cannon will make a strike. Now for the movement. First off, we develop a barrier by engaging the Excalibur generator to a maximum power. For propulsion during that time, 
will install the inhibitor still on those large solid rockets we got from the ruins of the mass driver. When Excalibur's barrier expires, we use the Igor Seal's four generator to develop a barrier. Then we also detach the solid rockets shift Excalibur into conventional flight. Using this method, we can get right into Murkawa's face. As it fires, it will be defenseless. During this time, we will block the muscle of Murkawa's cannon with Excalibur's bow ram, upon which we should have 0.67 seconds. With the cannon fire of the Excalibur, we'll destroy the Aegis of the Force Slave Generator and encapsulate the Markov along the way, and then we break through. And that's what the plan is all about. The combination of the barriers of both ships storming the Markava, the timing of the cannon fire of the Excalibur, those are all going to be crucial. Because many of those and the consequences are going to be severe. And so it'll be necessary to have both crews in sync with each other. That's why I like to play Sig in command of Excalibur. I have no qualms with that. What do you think, Queen? Will you lend us your battleship? Since there appears to be no other alternative, let's go with that. Please use it as you see fit. But are we not cutting comfortably close? When you calculate the arrival time and the barrier generation time, you see what I mean. One minor mishap will put in a situation where you could run out of the barrier power before our arrival. Also, we'll be devoting the board generators to keeping the barriers up. Will that leave us without perimeter defenses? We must have a chance if we get engaged by the Seraph Angels on our way to Merkaba. We'll hold them off. You can count on us. We might just concentrate on taking out the main cannon. Thanks! We're depending on you. Already everywhere else has been taken out. This is the only place that's left. This is going to be the true final battle. We're finally getting there, guys. We are finally getting there after so much back and forth. But of course, this is going to be cut for budget reasons, so we won't be able to see the whole thing, even if we see the end of it. We set out to silence God's Ark Merkav, which was the epitome of offense and defensive power, and then storm inside it. Initiated the operation by destroying Zohar. You can see that for me where they basically do this operation. It probably was cut again, cut because of budget reasons, sadly. So here we see the Zohar and the cannon there, the main cannon. It sees us and tries to fire upon us. Because of the barrier from uh, the Excalibur and the Sower and the uh, Idrisil combined, be able to withstand the cannon fire. The cannon keeps firing. And eventually, the first barrier will then disappear. But they keep going forward. They keep going forward, they create a new barrier. There we go, the cannon fire goes out. And then they use the battering ram thing. And you can see the... You just... The bars get on top of that. And then... Pretty much hit the cannon. And blows it up. And then... Fire the... Cannon on the Excalibur onto the uh, stage generator, and then boom! Cannon number cow destroyed. As Andvari, yeah, the Andvari. Remember that we have Taurus build the gears again. So the Markava's cannon has been destroyed. That means now finally the God's Ark is now completely open to being infiltrated and possibly destroyed. That's good, right? That can't be! A secondary explosion? Oh no! I should have known better. What a miscalculation! The explosion was too big! Right with the main condenser right under the main cannon. Induce a secondary explosion. Who could have been so stupid? You mean we overdid it? 
What did I not realize it sooner? This means you might have. Oh no, Ellie! Oh my gosh, Ellie! What is it this time? Hey, is it time? What more is going to happen? Something is happening in the center of Merkava. What could it be? And then, we thought we maybe have done it, or maybe overdone it, maybe have destroyed this now. Then this happens. Yeah. Deuce evolves. Damn. It just obliterates all the land around it. That thing just doesn't want to die. Deuce just doesn't want to die at all, he just refuses. At that time, the earth quaked and shook. At the location where Merkava crashed, a giant object appeared. It was Deuce's final form. Merkava was married in its vessel. Deuce evolved through the use of Krillin's nanomachines into a planetary scale weapon and began terraforming, intending to convert his entire planet into a weapon. We retreated back to the base at the snow plane to form a new strategy. We decided to go back into Deuce. Time was running out for us. And... Finally, we can move and we can not only move, we can finally travel and do stuff again. We haven't been able to do that since their second animal relic dungeon. And you know what? This is going to open up a lot of cool things, I can promise you that. But man, we are basically now only one final dungeon away from being the game. But there's going to be some other stuff too. Next episode we're going to explore this base, find out exactly where we are. Because this base is kind of important, and we maybe hear the music as well. We we'll talk to a lot of people in this base, because a lot of people here are survivors of the world. And then... Gonna do a lot of cool stuff, including some optional stuff. Not all of it though, some of it. And then it's off to the final dungeon, which is basically the big object we just saw. And then the game will finally be beaten. What a long game, a lot of story right we just had now. Don't worry guys, we're almost there. Almost there. Almost there. Just a little bit more. A little bit more. And then it's over. Oh, what a game. What a game. Like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on social media. That's good for now. See you guys next time as my journey in Cinegears continues.